think I'm asleep right now. Oh, it's it's oh. Calling this meeting to order the, uh, the Board of Mayor and Alderman uh, agenda, uh, November the 18th, 2012, regular meeting. Uh, Call the meeting to order. Uh, we have a form. Uh, the prayer is by Alderman Green, the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll, I'll do that. that you've given us and dear lord we just pray that since this is such a busy busy time of the season and a time that we're going through all of these things with our uh, uh aldermen our everything we just pray dear god that it be in your hands however these things turn out and help us to know no matter what god that you're in charge of this place every person that's in here and help us not to be talking ugly and bad about each other. And more than anything, help us as we're starting out new, help us <coughs> as we have some new ones, dear Lord, lead us in the right way to help them and help each other. And we thank you for this city. We thank you for all of our employees that work so hard to keep this going. And we thank you for all of our staff. We thank you for having the privilege of living in Laverne. It's a wonderful city, and I pray, dear God, that it can stay that way. And I thank you for all the years that I've been here. Since 1970, I've been in Laverne, and I thank you for the great people that are in this city, and help us to always remain faithful to you, first of all, and then to each other, and to help each other along the way. And Lord, for this weather, for the poor people that have no place to sleep or nothing to eat or nowhere to go, dear God, lead us all in a way if we see someone that needs help. And all these things, dear God, I ask in your name. Amen. 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 Thanks, the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty justice, justice for all. <laughs> the order of business uh, number one is a uh, motion to elect a new alderman. So I'll open the table up for discussion. Make a motion to appoint Jason Cole. We just with the discussion, I didn't call a motion. Uh, you can't discuss it till you get a second. Yes, we can. We discussed it beforehand. Since we got a motion, I'll call for a second. I didn't hear. What? I made, Tom made the motion, and I'm looking for a second. I'll second. We'll do a roll call. Uh, Alderman Green. Aye. Uh, Alderman Broker. Aye. Alderman Brown. No. And I say no. That's a tie vote. And I'll say no again. The floor is open for another motion. I make a motion for Calvin Jones. And I'll second it. We'll do a roll call. Oh, no, I have a discussion. Um, I just would like to ask again because it's been brought up several times, um, the will of the people, the elections, election process. And I have all respect in the world for, for uh, Mr. Jones, um, sat on the Planning Commission the last four years. But I would have the same argument for him if he was sitting in the number four. So I would just like to have my own good, but I think the people are asking as well for some sort of justification. We're not even jumping from three to four, we're jumping to five. So is the election process and the will of the people, is that not important? That's my question. Well, in, 
I've really thought about this a lot, Tom, so I'm glad that you brought it up. The people that voted for Sherry and I, who was elected, used their two votes for us. And that means the majority of the people did not get a chance to vote for a third choice. No one got a chance to vote for a third choice, but if they chose the person um, in the election that they wanted in, um, had they, if they hadn't have voted for one of the two of us, then they, their votes would have counted for someone else as well. And their votes need to be considered as well. Well, what I, and I, I hear that, but I, I guess my, my argument here is this. Um, two or three made the, the comment that we do need to look forward, looking forward, change our charter, do whatever steps is possible. Because quite frankly, it does give the appearances of nothing but uh, being political or handpicking. Uh, again, he uh, is very qualified, Mr. Jones, uh, as Mr. Cole is, as Mr. Farmer was. Uh, my point is we right now be become political rather than let the people voice their opinion. Any, any, uh, any other comments? I've got a first a motion and a second roll call. Alderman Green? Yes. No. Alderman Broker? No. Yes. Mr. Brown, and I'll Thank you. This. I appreciate it. Motion carries. Congratulations. Dennis, I did not intend to say yes. So I don't know how can what are we you. Doing? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I said I did not intend to say yes. Um, Do you, it, just, can just you. call for a, another vote, I think. We're going to call for another vote on this motion. I call for a motion to elect an alderman to have a motion. Yeah. We've already got that. You have the motion second. Just redo the, we'll redo the call the, vote. Okay. Green. And we have Jason Cole, right? No. Uh, we're no. voting on uh, Calvin, Jones. Calvin Jones. No. No. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. And I say yes. Okay. That is a tie vote. Two, two tie. And I say yes to break the tie. Congratulations, Calvin. We'll go right into the oath of office ceremony for the new alderman. Mr. Jones, let me get this in my pocket here. I, Calvin Jones, do solemnly swear or affirm to support the Constitution and the laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Tennessee. Of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Tennessee. And the Charter and the Ordinances of the City of Laverne. And the Charter and the Ordinances of the City of Laverne. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office. Faithful and impartially discharge the duties of my office. As Alderman of the City of Laverne. As Alderman of the City of Laverne. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, the next order of business is a motion to elect a vice mayor. We can discuss it before or we can discuss it on the site. If there ain't no discussion, I'll open it up for, for a motion. We're electing a vice mayor. I need a motion. I need a second. I'd like to submit Sherry Green. The motion on the table for Sherry Green. I need a second. Second. Alderman uh, Brown made the motion. Alderman Broker made the second. Anyone else? Any, anybody else make, wants to make a motion for, for a vice mayor? Hearing none, I'll take a, take a roll call. 
Ms. Green? I guess I vote for myself. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be silly if I didn't. Alvin Jones? Yes. Alvin Brown? Yes. Aye. Okay. I, and I say aye. Congratulations. Moving to number four, approve the minutes for October the 9th, 2014, public hearing, October the 9th, 2014, regular meeting, and October the 20th, 2014, special meeting. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Need a second? Everybody say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number five, department reports, fire department. Mayor, Alderman, welcome aboard, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. In the month of October 2014, we have a total of 244 calls. Those consisted of two structure fires, 25 fire alarms, three vehicle fires, four hazardous materials calls, 36 motor vehicle accidents, 146 medical calls, six cancel in route, and 22 non-emergency miscellaneous calls. The average response time for the month of October 2014 was 3.4 minutes, and the total water consumption for the month of October 2014 was 900 gallons. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Next to be the police. Mayor, Vice Mayor, our two new aldermen and one, I don't want to call him old one, but I didn't get to be here last week, I hope you all understand. I had to go home for an event my son was involved in that happens only once in a lifetime. So I had to go and help with my dad and get him there and get him back. For those of you who haven't been here, we are in the process of implementing a new computer-aided dispatch software, hardware, et cetera. It's up and running. It's been running since the end of June. and. Um, the records management portion is up and running from the standpoint that we're still keying uh, everything that we have into that and we're still having to do some runs with the data for test purposes so we're still actually keying twice each report until we can get everything worked out to make sure there are no errors uh, as it goes into TBI because it must be accurate and correct as it goes into Tiber's or, or we have issues and we're beginning to get some data uh, from the CAD but particularly from the records management side and our uh, mobile field reporting and mobile CAD should be done hopefully and in place and training etc by the end of December so we should be up and running with the mobile portion of it. If you'll notice on the uh, first slide for the offenses that are on the, uh, the lower left, you can see that there are decreases there over the period of uh, October of last year, year to date, to uh, October of this year, year to date. The dashboard is something that we'll be using. That's the reason I brought these in tonight for you to see. Go to the second one. Please. This dashboard indicates uh, some selected crimes, uh, robbery, murder, forcible rape, aggravated assault, which are major violent crimes in the Group A offenses. And you see where those are falling in right now, especially across the dashboard uh, with the decreases and then with the increases that we have as well. Some of them are drastic and some of them are not so drastic. And the last one concerns uh, some major property crimes year to year. Uh, one example is burglary. Burglaries are down 45%, uh, 46%. Uh, domestic violence is down 26%. There's not a lot we can do about that. We can't be there when those things start. All we can do is come in on the tail end and try to follow up and uh, and do the things we have to do after that. Murder, of course, is down when you're dealing with one or two. Um, that's a good thing because we have none. That's the good thing. Forcible rape, 
uh, is down. That's something else that we don't have a lot of control over. Uh, even with a presence, sometimes we can't stop those, and many of those are generally domestic violence related. One of the things we do know um, from some of the actual numbers themselves is that our domestic violence uh, victims have dropped. Um, and that's something that we're glad to see. Those numbers shot out of the sky. Part of that has to do, I believe, uh, with the economy over the past few years, we began seeing a tremendous increase, not just here, but all across the country as well. We have a couple of things coming. Our Christmas for children and seniors uh, is open right now. We don't have a mechanism whereby we can uh, accept donations, et cetera, with the exception of items. Uh, the city can accept them, but under the umbrella of the Fraternal Order of Police, we can accept them. So anyone who is interested in helping support a family, adopt a family, um, and children and seniors, uh, then let us know. We're, we're open and we really need folks to step up and share with our neighbors because that's why we're here. The other thing is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving coming up next week. Uh, we are gathering food boxes or gathering food items to make food boxes and we need turkeys, uh, we need canned vegetables, we need dry, dry foods that children particularly like and can eat because our kids are gonna be home from school for five days. And we have many children who, when they're home just for a weekend, go, home, go to school on Monday morning hungry. <coughs> uh, we have helped uh, over the years and still do with providing backpacks for our children uh, so that they have foods that can go home on the weekend, things they can eat, things they like that they don't have to cook, uh, puddings, uh, jello, things of that nature, fruits that they can eat. So we appreciate any help there. Also in December is Project Blue Light. The concerns of police survivors or cops is there to assist families uh, of law enforcement officers who have died in the line of duty. This year, those numbers are increasing uh, closer to the end of the year drastically. And we have Project Blue Light, and what we ask you to do is you decorate for Christmas, have one blue light, either in a window, on a porch, or outside somewhere, uh, to honor those who have made that ultimate sacrifice in the various communities this year, serving the, the citizens they take the oath to serve. Any questions? We ask you to come, uh, see us, ride along with us. Um, I've approved one, and you're more than welcome to come as many times as you like. We'd love to have you. Our first Citizen Police Academy application process is open now. It closes, uh, regretfully, the 30th of December for this next one, and we have limited spaces. But anyone who is interested in participating in our Citizen Police Academy, we would love to have you do so. Um, our next one starts January 10th. Does that sound right? Kathy did the press release, 14th, somewhere right in there. It's the first part of January anyway. We have to shut it down on the 30th for the applications because we do have to run backgrounds. But we'd love to have as many as want to come, as many as we can house. And that's limited to about 20 or 25 at the most per class. 20th, 20th will be the first session. Any questions? One, one Chief, there's been a lot of talk on social media that I've heard and heard people talk that I want to get rid of the police chief. I want to clarify that right now that uh, Chief Walker's our police chief and, it, and I'm backing him 100%. We're proud, we're lucky and proud to have Chief Walker. And I want Thank to clear, clear all that up. And Chief Walker. Thank you. Thank you. Next to be codes. Good evening. Congratulations to the newly installed Mayor and Alderman tonight. Um not the right glasses for this project. The, um, no, thank you. 
Building permits for October 2014, the monthly report is as follows. Single family dwellings, there's one permit issued, valuation was $189,000. Commercial, there were three projects at a valuation of 1.2 million. Um, miscellaneous permits, there were 12 at a valuation of 16,000. Five sign permits, two grading permits, four other permits to include additions and remodels. Um, one mobile home, three commercial plan review, zero residential plan review, total number of permits issued for the month were 28 at a valuation of 1.5 million. Plumbing permits were two single family dwellings and two commercial um, mechanical permits. There was one single family dwelling, one commercial. The complaints for the month of October were tall grass were 164, junk cars and yards were 11, and 43 others. Uh, building inspections were 145 for the month of October. Fire inspections were 18. Year to date, there have been 215. Our impact fees were as follows. The road impact, um, 8,360 for a total. Year to date total is 126,000 for roads. Parks and recreation was 311 for the month. Year to date, 23,947. Police impact was, for the month was 680. Total year to date was 13,660. Monthly revenue with impact fees is 16,452 for the month of October, 295,228 uh, year to date. The number of single family permits issued year to date have been 85. The number of single family permits issued during the same time period last year were 37. Total number of all permits this year have been 321. Any questions? So. Okay. No one? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next to be Park and Recreation Department. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, congratulations. Um, AC's not able to be with us tonight. This is the <coughs> Parks Report for the month of October. I'm um, just going to hit a couple things real quick. We've added a couple items on this. We've started to document our help desk tickets on the monthly report. Uh, we had 33 help desk tickets, um, dedicated 104 man hours, um, 43 hours of overtime. Um, that was mainly two events held in the park, the drive-in movie and trail of treats. Um, upcoming events, we've got the park and rec meeting tomorrow night, six o'clock, senior center advisory committee on Thursday at four, Thanksgiving lunch uh, for the seniors, Thursday at 11. Um, Parade of Lights is coming up in December, and it looks like I skipped over Veterans Day. Kind of did that on purpose since that's already taken place. I kind of want to touch on that a minute. Um, I'm going to kind of embarrass Julie here a little bit, but Julie had an idea. We're going to take it in a little different direction this year. So we generally have a small ceremony. We kind of um, scaled that up just a little bit, purchased 70 flags. Um, People were able to purchase one of those flags for $10 um, for a veteran. And I think that went over real well. Hopefully next year we'll be able to double that amount. Um, I think that made the community kind of come together. It was a nice ceremony. We had a good turnout. Um, we'd like to see all you there in the future. Hopefully it get bigger and better. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next will be finance. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. Tonight's financial report is through the end of September. We're three months into our fiscal year. For the general fund, expenses have exceeded revenues by approximately $1.6 million. For our local sales tax, we've collected approximately $1.2 million. That's $220,000 better than what we budgeted for this time of the year and $155,000 better than prior year. In our State Street Aid Fund, revenues have exceeded, uh, exceeded expenditures by approximately uh, $135,000. And in our Stormwater Fund, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $104,000. And in our Water Sewer Fund, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $1 million. The second page represents our 
balances in our various bank accounts. And the third page is a comparison to prior year. For the general fund, expenses uh, are up 581,000. Revenues are up $1.1 million. And the water sewer fund, revenues are up 275,000. And expenses are up 229, or expenses are down 200, approximately $230,000. Any questions? Thank you. Library. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, good evening. For the month of October, there were 9,365 items checked out. The attendance in the library was 8,608 with an average of 319 per day. We issued 199 new cards. There were 62 library programs with an attendance of 4,316, and we had 3,135 total computer users. Some highlights of October included a participating in the annual trail retreat sponsored by Parks and Recreation, and it's always fun to see so many families walk in the trail who are frequent library users. And it's also a very excellent opportunity for us to talk about the library, talk about the programs that we have to offer, and the resources that are available. Another engrossing highlight was Gross Grub. The attendance for this year's Gross Grub was record-breaking. Almost 400 participants tasted delicious food with gross names prepared by our staff. And a very special thanks to the Laverne Police Department for providing color sheets and crayons to all of the children. And then they also shared important tips for the parents to make Halloween a very safe night for all. Our Food for Fines program began on November the 1st and will continue through Wednesday, November 26. Patrons with overdue fines may bring in non-perishable, unexpired items, and they will receive $1 credit for each item donated toward their overdue fines. These items are then donated to the Laverne Police Department to use for Thanksgiving or for the Christmas for Children and Seniors program. Last but not least, the library staff is very excited that we are now going to enter a float into the Parade of Lights on Saturday, December the 6th. One of our very favorite children's books will be the focus of the float, but I'm not going to let the Grinch out of the bag, but little Cindy Lou Who hopes to see you at the parade. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Thank you. Next to be water treatment plant. Union Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman Brown, Alderman Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alderman Joker. Uh, what we have, I guess, with the timing of our reports and the scheduling of meetings, is our report from the, the summary of the water treatment plant for the month of September. Um, uh, the water plant uh, put out 74 million gallons into uh, out the master meter. Into, the finished water. Uh, 2013, 2014, we it increased just a little up to a little over 76 million gallons per day. For the month of September, uh, we were flushing hydrants in that month. We hit 44 of our sites. We flushed uh, about 1.1 million gallons of water, and this is done for our seasonal uh, maintenance into the, the dead end lines and just uh, preparing the line for the, the next year. Um, our maintenance for the month was $3,165, and at the beginning of October, our balance was $17,822 for the remainder of the contract year, which runs through uh, the end of January. Uh, in our, I guess we're a little bit belated, but our, our public activity was for Old Timers Fest this year. We enjoyed uh, being there and kind of educating, meeting a lot of people, talking to them about their water, and uh, just enjoying the festival itself. Um, for our issues, we had six quality calls. That's when someone calls about the appearance of their water, the smell about their water, and we try to go out and help them through that process. Uh, they range from just them smelling their, their gases from the drain when they turn the water on, or just the chlorine smell sometimes comes, and that's just the water being aerated. Uh, and it 
it's usually just a, a miss that comes through. Uh, no injuries, no, no lost time accidents at the plant. Uh, our safety topic this month for our briefings was arc flash, uh, something that's coming on strong with OSHA. Um, that's about all from September. Uh, we did fill our one vacancy. We had the cross connection inspector had, uh, resigned, and we filled him with a local fellow. He's from Smyrna, and he's actually going to school tomorrow and Friday for his, his certifications to the inspector. And I think that about covers our, our monthly report. So, so we'll move up to current events. Uh, I guess everyone noticed that we did have a letter of violation that had to be be sent out. Uh, this exceedance came in the middle of October, October 16th. What had happened, our supplemental uh, water supply, which is a lagoon behind the plant, uh, some of you have been there to see it, it, it collects all of our backwash water, uh, these sludge water. We let it settle out there. Then we bring back in the water off the top. <coughs> and this has been a savings for the city. And we do that because the water would normally go to Metro Sewer and be charged for it. So we take that water, we put it back into production, and it they, they sells it for uh, the revenue of finished water. During the month, the sludge had a disturbance in it. We don't know all the drains in the plant, everything goes there. Uh, so it's hard to really pinpoint exactly why. But it, it turned over like a, a seasonal change, and it just turned a, a murky goldish brown color. And that water continued to come into the plant. And by the time our, our filtration, the system itself picked it up, it had been running through it for, I guess, a few 20 minutes or so. We don't really know. But it is designed to shut down, and it did. The operator was right on hand to assist it. But in that amount of time, it mixed in water into the main clear well, and that's what brought the turbidity up to that, that high peak of 1.76. didn't stay there very long, but it was a reportable incident. And the more the plant run, the plant was making very good water. It diluted the, the turbidity, and things came down. Uh, but it did require reporting to the state agency. So we did that within the, the regulation time. It was later that evening, so the next day it was all reported to them. We had to make just a general summary. We submit all that to them, and then he decides what tier group it's going to be. There's three tiers of violation. The first tier is the worst, where we'd have to have uh, immediate notification, which would involve health issues. And it wasn't a health issue, it was just a disturbance. The water got cloudy. Um, the next day we were out sampling, make sure nothing was in the system that could have grown. Uh, so we report all this to him. He decides and he decided it was a tier two. And this is all verbal. We, uh, to this date, I don't think we've received the actual notification letter from the state agency. Going verbally with him, he instructed that we are going to receive a letter. So that's kind of what we were waiting on. So that was probably the first week, 10 days of, of that. Uh, I was in contact with Bruce and nothing, nothing came in and we were just waiting to see what guidance they could have. So after that second week we called him back and said, Look, you know, what, what can we do here? He said it's internally it has to go through his office manager up to the central office manager and then it would come to the city. So it, it's still in that office. Um, so we looked a little bit further into the regulations and said we have to get notice out within 30 days. So we started really digging into it. We got back with the regulator. He gave us the template to use, which is an EPA form uh, for a, a single exceedance from surface water treatment rule. We populated it leather. We have to use their language. There's no way around it. There's an EPA rule. It's enforced by the state, which is passed down to them. So the language of the letter is just, it, it basically to me, it makes it hard for the customer to understand. Um, so we went on to that process, and we have to get it approved by them, so it went through all of our, our through our uh, Severn Trent, through our compliance team, and we crafted the letter, and then we have to send it back to the state for their approval before it goes out, and there was a few other things we had to change. We were trying to get around some of the, the language that was in there, but it just didn't work. Uh, he kept sending it back saying, we need to add this, we need to add that. So that went on for a few days, but uh, in the final product, we went to print on it. I lost my copy of it. Uh, but it went down to print. We used uh, trying to get the best pricing because it was it occurred at the plant, so we didn't want the city to have any responsibility to cost of it. Uh, so we did use our printer, and they're coming out of right outside of Sarasota, Florida. But the letters were mailed on uh, November 14th, 
there is a misprint on a letter uh, informed uh, the state agency that it's just a typo error. It was typed up as 14 October instead of 14 November as the delivery date. And they received it, uh, I think, over Monday and probably today some of the other ones went out. But uh, that's the basis of it. It's just a reportable violation. There was no health effect to it. I say we tested everything after that, that day and the day after, the day after, the day after. We continuously monitor. But it's just one of them hiccups that came in a water plant. And it's uh, not something that I planned at all. But it's a, it's a definite black mark on my record. I'm an individual. I'm a certified operator. The chief operator, so I'm responsible for everything, whether it's happening under my watch or under other operators, which that night it was just one of them things that happened. You know, all the, the perfect storm was lined for it. Uh, that's about my summary of it. That's most because I've got they they was want to know why the, the letter said it would happen in October and they didn't get the letter in November. I think that's a lot of confusion. It is. It that. is, and the regulation states after we checked into it, we were pretty much dependent on our regulatory agent to to guide us with the information. He did give it verbally, and the way it sounded was he was going to send a letter and. I say that letter still hadn't arrived, so that kind of made us question after that first week had passed, uh, and we still hadn't heard anything from him. Uh, so we, middle of next week, we, I gave him a call back, and he said it's still there. And then uh, this one we looked a little bit closer into the rule, and it's got the tier two, uh, the best reasonable method within 30 days. And the method here was an individual mailing to each customer that got that received the water bill. Any, any more questions? Thank you. I ask at this point if I could be excused. Uh, I need to get home. My wife informed me her mother passed away today. Sorry, Thomas. Thank you. Thanks for being there. Public Works Department. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. Congratulations. This is for the month of October. We had a total of 46 recall, uh, request calls for pickup brush. We had a total of 739 with uh, 123,500 pounds. And I think we were down for about a week and a half with the truck. Uh, 578 hours uh, for workhouse. 382.75 for mowing, which mowing's pretty well over for the year. Uh, 132 work orders had a total of 35 and a half overtime hours, 31 of that being on call. Uh, four and a half would be call ins, uh, no special projects. So, the last couple of weeks we have been getting all the snow equipment checked out, and it's all ready to go. In the fleet department, we had a total of 30 vehicle repairs, and there'd be 25 in house, five was outsourced. Uh, Total of 29 oil changes, 14 in-house, 15 at Vaveline, which uh, the 15 at Vaveline is the uh, patrol cars. We're not doing the patrol cars yet. We're just doing city vehicles. And um, I think some of the unmarked cars we're doing. Um, it's been a busy month. Any questions? Anybody got any questions? Do, do, do they run synthetic oil in the police cars? Yes, they do. Synthetic oil. Yes, sir. Thank and we have it there because we got several new vehicles. Or not several, but the ones that we have, I think the police department's got a couple that we do use the synthetic oil in. Okay. More questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next to be utility department. Mayor Alderman, uh, first of all, I'd say congratulations to all. Uh, for the month of October, the water department had a total of 117 work orders. We had zero new meter sets. We answered 310 Tennessee one calls, uh, only one main line break with nine service line breaks. <clears throat> uh, estimated 20,000 gallons of water not sold roughly and a total of 70 hours overtime. Uh, special project, Project AMR, the radio read meters that we're installing, 1,039 for the month. That's a big number and hope we can stay there next couple months and finish these things up. <clears throat> the sewer department, we had a total of 84 work orders. 
57 of those was service calls, 27 was on pump stations. We had three final grinder pump inspections and we're able to rebuild uh, six grinder pumps in-house. <clears throat> Our overtime hours were 35 for the month and also Project AMR with the sewer department helping out on those things. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, sir. <coughs> Next, the Human Resource Department. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Board of Aldermen. The human resource report is as follows. We had two external jobs posted, 28 applicants, actually one new hire, and a total of 74 NeoGov job interest cards. I am happy to report zero resignations and zero terminations. Seven workers' compensation claims. We had 90 care here enrollments three no-shows, 288 care here um, general enrollments, 350 dependent lives covered, 198 employee lives covered for a total claim dollars amount of $165,487. And I'm happy to report that we had a successful employee health safety and wellness fair during the month of October and it was greatly attended by many employees and we had a great time. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Going in number six, that's the presentation of certification of appreciation employee of the month of November. Uh, it's Jackie Wilson, Jackie Williamson. She's not here, so uh, I see that she gets that. Well, well deserved. Well deserved. Moving into old business, number seven, resolution 2014-30, a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an am amendment to the ground site lease agreement with <coughs> SBA Communication Corporation for the cell tire located at the water treatment plant out there on. Uh, motion to approve. Need a, Tom got the motion in a second. 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 Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Next is the stand of the agenda. The staff discussed this at the workshop. Number eight, stand of the agenda. Need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes. On to new business. Motion to appoint or remove board members. Number A, Economic Development Advisory Committee. Council member. Position is vacant. Need somebody to be appointed for the Economic Development Commission. Are we making a motion, or is that just uh, yes, an appointment? We need a motion from the board to, to, appoint. to appoint someone. I make a motion to appoint Alyssa Brown. I make a motion to appoint Tom. Tom. I see we got to do one at a time. Actually. Uh, the first motion would need a second, and then second. after that, your motion might be voted on. If it's willing, we receive a second. If it did not receive a second. Like the first motion was with uh, Melissa Brown. Melissa Brown got a motion. Need a second. I'll second it. We'll go roll call. Miss Green. No. Uh, uh, yes. Miss Jones. Yes. Ms. Brown. Aye. Uh, Tom. Aye. Aye. I say aye. Melissa Brown on the committee. Number B, number B Local Emergency Planning Commission. Council member need, need one and a motion to appoint. Is 
did a motion to appoint one, one council member for the local emergency planning commission. Okay, I'll nominate Tom. Sherry, nominate Tom, be a second. I'll second. Ms. Brown, second Tom. A roll call, Ms. Green? Aye. M Mr. Jones? Aye. Ms. Brown? Aye. Ms. Tom? Aye. <laughs> Most curious. And we'll see Planning Commission. Dennis, I, I believe with this one, um, I would like to, um, we are already on it. He has been the chairman, um, has a few more years of experience. So I will, um, I believe you have to be on there. So I will withdraw the second council seat if that's okay with uh, Arnold Jones. Uh, basically nominating him to take my seat. So you, you're making a motion to, to nominate uh, Alvin Jones? I am. Need a second? Second. Second by Ms. Green. Roll call, Ms. Green? Aye. Ms. Jones? Aye. Ms. Brown? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. You stay on. And then the last one is number D, Stormwater Appeals and Advisory Board. Council member, one, one member. I make a motion for Sherry Green. Sherry Green for Stormwater. Need a second. Second. Second by Alderman Jones. To the roll call, Miss Green. I guess I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right, know but, anything about but, it, but I can learn. Miss Jones. Ms. Brown. Aye. Aye. Um, well that that fills the board. Going to number ten, first reading ordinance. 2014-24, an ordinance to amend the Title 20, Chapter 2, Section 20-208 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding park and rec user fees. <coughs> Who's got this one? Who knows what this is? I can explain it. This, this basically is adding some fees for sponsorships uh, for the uh, baseball and softball leagues. Uh, it also addresses some issues with tournaments. It amends that section there uh, for, for next year's tournaments that are coming up. So it, we did talk about this at uh, workshop, and, and this is the same uh, from the workshop. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Alderman Broker. Need a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Green. Uh, Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Carries. Aye. Resolution 2014-33, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Alderman to declare current property owned by the city to be surplus needs to be directed to disposal of the same. Need a, need a motion? Make a motion. Motion by Vice Mayor Green. Need a second? A second. Second by Alderman Brown. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Carries. Number 12, motion to approve a letter of agreement between the <laughs> University of Tennessee Municipal Technology Advisory Service and the City of Laverne to conduct a water and sewer rate study. Motion to approve. I'll second. Motion, motion to approve by Alderman Broker, second by Alderman Brown. Uh, everybody in favor say aye. 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 Curious. Motion to approve bids for employee benefit package. We talked about in the workshop. Mayor, I think uh, yes. well, Cheryl. Cheryl has uh, an amendment to the uh, Recommendations. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. We'd like to discuss the proposal as it was submitted. We have one slight amendment to that, and it's at the very bottom on the second page. It's very minor, and I'm going to let our 
benefits broker, Todd Harrison, speak to you about that. Yeah, we made the recommendation to move to Blue Cross, and we still are sticking with that on the medical and pharmacy. Uh, the request for proposal was to match the current city benefits, and we realized that there were some changes on the vision piece of it uh, that Blue Cross could not administer. So with that, we uh, requested a proposal from HealthScope and they can administer the dental, the vision, and the disability, the short-term disability, as is the way the city has it today. So we're amending that recommendation to offer HealthScope to be the administrator for those benefits. So that was, that's the only change. Just for clarification, we're not just gonna do the they weren't able to match vision, so we're going to go with all, you were able to go with health score with all three? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Yes. Thank you. And basically the same as the Blue Cross Blue Shield? Blue Cross will be the medical and pharmacy provider. <coughs> uh, because uh, there's not a network associated with the dental vision okay. and the disability, we just needed somebody to administer that. So um, and Blue Cross offered a plan which was different from the way that the city had it today. So okay. HealthScope stepped in and said, we can administer the plan the way that it's ministered today. Okay. So that's why we want that. All right. And again, we also want to notate that the proposal resulted in a $300,000 savings to the city for the Blue Cross Blue Shield plan that would be put in place. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made to, by Alderman Jones, second by Alderman Broker. Uh, everybody in favor say, say aye. 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 Passed. Motion to approve software and hardware support service maintenance agreements by, by and between the City of Laverne, Utility District Incorporated, and Badger Meter Incorporated. This is the MI. This is the AMRs. Need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Need a second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Number 15, motion to approve an agreement with S ESPY Services Incorporated to conduct a telecommunication audit for the city of Laverne. This is a this is a no charge, no charge deal for the phones. Make a motion if to approve. Huh? If they don't find anything, if they don't find anything. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that was the one where, okay, they're going to do the audit and they get a percentage they of get, what they, they get find. Fifty percent of what they find, and then they get fifty percent of the savings over the next twelve months. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, second. Did you approve it? Uh, I can. Uh, motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> second. Motion approved by Tom, uh, Alderman Tom Broker, and second by Calvin Jones. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Number 16, motion to surrender lease agreement and waiver one year notice requirement with Heritage Valley Homeowners Association for the Heritage Valley Park. Need a motion to, uh, to uh, surrender the lease. This is a request from the homeowners. Um, and speaking with the uh, Parks and Rec, they um, were not using it, at least uh, uh, at this point in time. So uh, I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion approved by uh, Alderman Broker, second by Vice Mayor Green. Uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Carried. Number 17, mo motion to authorize the city administrator and the city attorney to negotiate a settlement in the Laverne versus Yarborough and McDonald's uh, compensation 
lawsuit. We talked about in the workshop. Motion we'll have a motion. Approved. Motion by Vice Mayor Green. We need a second. Second. Second by Alderman Jones. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number 18, motion to approve change order number one, fire station number three, building improvements. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Vice Mayor Green. Second. 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 Second by on the broker. This is the fire sprinklers at the uh, at the uh, fire station three. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh -huh. aye. Carries. We're down finally to Mayor and Alderman's comments. I'm going to go with the new one, uh, uh, Alderman Jones. Thank you, Mayor. First thing I'd like to say, uh, as you place the city, uh, city's mind at ease about the chief, I'd like to place the city's mind at ease. I'm here for the city of Laverne. There were 1,500 people that obviously voted for uh, Mr. Cole, and I appreciate your, 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 your loyalty to him. But even if, Alderman, even if Mr. Cole had got up here, I would hope he would have been for the city of Laverne. Mm -hmm. I ran on that campaign, and that's what I'm going to stick with. Any of his people that voted for him, if you want to talk to me, feel free to do so. But again, remember, I'm here for the, I'm, the political part of it is only politicized because it's a political campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm here for the city. I'm willing to work with Vice Mayor Green. I'm willing to work with Alderman Broker for the betterment of the city. It's no secret that we all ran on the same ticket. I ran with the mayor, or not on the same ticket, but we all were voting at, at, at the same spot, I would say. And we do have a camaraderie. We work together. I worked with the mayor when I first came on to the planning commission, and we worked throughout the years. I've grown to uh, adore <laughs> Melissa <laughs> because we think the same way. We talked a lot out there while we were out there campaigning. I can work with anyone, and I hope that that is going to be re returned to me to be able to work with you. Regardless of how you feel about tonight's outcome, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here for the city. So if you need me, you can call me. The other thing that I'd like to say that is I'd like to state the obvious. Without a doubt, since the inception of this board, you know this is the most diverse board that's been in the city of Laverne. Uh -huh. We needed it. Right. Whether you want to admit it or not, we needed it. We did. So I'm asking you to work with me, to work with all of us, and let's get the job done. Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to tell the members of the board that I really look forward to working with each of you. And I'd like to once again thank the, the people in Laverne for having faith in this board. And I'd like for us to come together as a community um, the election is over. It's time to um, build our bridges and meet in the middle. And I'd like to do that with, with all of you. We're all voicing the same thing. We're all saying on our first meeting, let's keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Whether it's new alderman, someone that's been here 16 years, um, you know, that's really what we have to do. And we can sit up here and, and, and uh, talk about elections or politics. Let's, let's keep moving this city forward. That's really where it's at. Mm -hmm. um, if we can work together, we can, we can do that. And, and Mr. Jones, you just said you, you could do it, work with anyone. I feel I have the same ability, and we're all saying that. So let's do it, and let's do it for the people. I feel the same way because I've been here for a long time, and, and I don't have a problem working with anybody. And I'm willing to do anything to help this city grow and to help our people with their needs. I think all of us are here for the same reason. Of course, I've worked with Mayor Walden a long time. I guess it's my turn. 
you know, it's, it, it's been a tough election year. The employees was a lot of time I felt was caught in the middle, and I apologize. I'll take some responsibility for it, but it's over with. You know, we need to work as a team, and, and the social media has made a, a, a circus out of this election. It, election's over with. We got a good board, a diverse board. Uh, we're going to work for y'all and the employees, the citizens. Uh, let, let's everybody bear the hatchet. Let's move this town forward. Uh, I'm willing to meet anybody halfway. Uh, it's the first time in my life that, that, uh, that, well, since I've been on the board, that I've been able to spend 100%. I don't have a job. Uh, my family sold the business uh, 65 years, and I'm determined, uh, at least for the next year, to give 100% to the city. I'm in a position to do that, and, uh, and, I, and I thank everybody for the help. Uh, Laverne has been good to my family. We've, we've been here almost 200 years, and the city's been good to me, and uh, I'd like to return the favor. I want to be good to y'all, and I, I don't want, I, I don't want nobody to, to leave the job. I want everybody to stay. I'm here to help the people employed and the citizens. I'm gonna bend over backwards to help everybody, as much as I can, and just just give us a chance. And Dennis, if you've been here for 200 years, how do you not age? Well, my family's been here 200 years. Sometimes I feel like I've been here. But, uh, but just, you know, give us a chance. You know, the ones who didn't vote for us, I mean, give us a chance. And, uh, you know, the social media, you know, everybody needs to chill out. You know, just the social media, just chill out, you know, y'all. And, uh, and I appreciate it, and I call the meeting adjourned.